Three months ago, I didn't think I'd be alive, much less being able to stand here in front of you all today. I started out my first semester in college loving every second that I was given. To be able to attend school was a gift that had been taken away from me for the last year and a half due to hospitalizations. A lot of times for me, I feel like I'm speaking more to the kids than I am to the people who are there, if that makes sense. I usually picture one specific patient that we have at a time whenever I'm speaking, and I imagine I'm just talking to them and telling them what I would want to hear so that they can know that I'm working to help them because they're the people I'm doing this for. As much as I love the audience and the people who are there, I'm not doing this for them, I'm doing it for the patients. Rebecca Taylor, 20, lost count of how many times she felt close to death. She was robbed of a normal childhood by autoimmune disease and pancreatitis, by 100 plus surgeries and 1300 plus days in hospitals, by organ removals and blood transfusions. Yet, she became one of Texas A&M University's top undergraduate scholars and the co-founder of a charity, started when she was just 12 years old. Rebecca and her mother, Kristen, were recently honored in Houston for Rebecca's Wish, which helps train doctors and ensure that thousands of children facing pancreatitis receive loving support and better treatment. This venue was an interesting venue. I have not seen Rebecca since I lost my father. And she kind of caught me by surprise, but not by surprise. And she gave me the longest hug and squeeze that I think I've ever gotten from her. And that's, that says something. And she was more worried about what I was going through than her giving one of the most important speeches of her young life. And that's just Rebecca. So, yeah. Yeah. Her medical problems emerged from the most ordinary childhood complaint. You know, when Re Rebecca first told us that her stomach hurt, she was a seven-year-old girl, and um, you know, little kids have tummy aches sometimes, and so you you take that seriously. And then when things escalated, and she said it still hurts, and it still hurts, and it hurts more, um, we didn't know what we were dealing with, and frankly, we didn't know what we were dealing with for a while, several months. Doctors initially suspected appendicitis. Weeks of tests determined she had a rare autoimmune disease. It was attacking several organs, including her pancreas. If I had a thousand adjectives, I could never describe the kind of pain that she went through. Just even thinking about it makes me sick to my stomach, but um, doubled over, incoherent, went three days without sleeping a single minute. After her diagnosis, Rebecca began seeing Dr. Sandeep Patel, a gastroenterologist in San Antonio. At the time, there were no nearby pediatricians trained to treat pancreatitis. He really changed my life. He had never had any formal training in pediatrics, but he just took them on just because he couldn't sit there and tell a child that he wasn't gonna help them. That's something special that you don't find in a lot of doctors. Pancreatitis is, is, is really a challenge, you know. It's got to be one of the most difficult inflictions that can happen to a human being from the standpoint of pain. But to accommodate that with a smile on your face and the kindness and the positive outlook, I mean, I've just, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest with you. A constant at Rebecca's hospital bedside, Kristen worried about the emotional toll on her daughter, who was missing out on much of life in school and at home. Nobody addressed the emotional component with long-term illness in these patients. We would address the medical, and we wouldn't think about the emotional and what they're going through. Each person needs something to grasp onto when they don't have, when so much of their life is taken away from them. And I couldn't grasp onto sports or being able to play instruments or be, even being able to go hey, join a lot of clubs at school. But for me, thankfully, what I love is learning and I can do that from anywhere. As a child, Rebecca sometimes endured bullying and ignorance, a lack of compassion and accommodation from certain students and teachers. Through her charity, 
she learned that many pediatric pancreatitis sufferers do not finish high school. It's not that they're not smart. It's not that they can't do that. They can, they, they just don't have the resources. And a lot of times they drop out just because of their peers or because of professors who don't support them. Despite all of the missed classes and medication, Rebecca aced her advanced placement classes in high school. She plans to complete an engineering undergrad, attend Harvard for a master's degree in biochemistry, and return to Texas A&M for a master's degree in engineering and a doctorate in medicine through the EnMed program in Houston. Sometimes it's really hard to have to get up and, you know, I wake up and I think, I've got to do a full, you know, while I'm in pain and while I'm exhausted, I have to go start the whole process just to get ready to go to class for the day. And then I know it's going to hurt me to go to class. So then I'll have to come back and be in pain. And, but for me, I just love learning so much that honestly, that's been one of the biggest motivators when I've been in the hospital. Just understand that for me, if I'm able to go to class, to be able to sit there and be that happy just learning, then I will, I'll do the extra hours that it takes in a day so that I can sit there, so that I can have, that's my normalcy, being able to learn. In 2014, when Rebecca lost her pancreas and several other internal organs, doctors transplanted her pancreatic islet cells into her liver so it can produce insulin and help convert food into energy. Soon, she heard from a charity best known for sending ill children to Disney World. Make-A-Wish approached me right after transplant and obviously just thinking about all the things I could do, there was the thought to go have high tea with the Queen of England and we we're like, oh, you mean like Princess Kate or someone like that? And I was determined, no, I wanted high tea with the Queen of England. And those thoughts went through my head, like maybe having the little garden in our backyard or meeting Taylor Swift, but meeting a celebrity or going on a trip, you have that and then it's over. But for Rebecca's wish, that is always, always giving back. And I will have that for the rest of my life. That's something that will stay with me. If I'm meeting someone else or having high tea with the queen, that's only benefiting myself. That's, and for me, I knew that I wanted to do something that would be able to help others too, like giving my wish to everybody else. In July, Rebecca's Wish and the National Pancreas Foundation hosted Camp Hope in Central Ohio. Children with pancreatitis from 15 states attended for free. Many kids, ages eight to 15, had never before attended an overnight camp because of their chronic illness. We see uh, a compassion that is born out of similar circumstances, similar experiences, similar pain. And she has a very explicit stated goal of curing the world of pancreatitis and helping these families and helping these kids. And I'd bet on her to, to accomplish that goal sooner rather than later. I'm very blessed to have so many supporters and so many people who helped me out through the past 12 years. And I realize that other kids don't get that. They don't have the hundreds of thousands of people who are praying for them across the world. and they're just there by themselves without that, and sometimes not even parents. And so to me, the thought of me having to go through all of that pain without any of the support that I have, that made it really hard for me to sit there in a hospital and think I'm being taken care of. I have people who are praying for me and loving on me, but other children don't have that. And for me, honestly, there's not much I can do from a hospital bed, but I can love on other patients. And so that means a lot to feel like I have purpose, like I'm not just sitting there and doing nothing all day. I'm able to do something to help others.